Alright. There we go. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody and welcome to Coach Council's Live. I'm going to start off today by just letting everybody know uh, this will only be a half hour today uh, as opposed to an hour just because I have a particularly busy Sunday. So, uh, you know, apologies in advance, but any questions I don't get to in this episode or if you guys have something you didn't think of, as always, you know, just send me an email uh, with the lives. I do read the comments, so go ahead and put your questions in the comments below. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I don't read or respond to comments on other videos typically. Uh, this is because I don't look at comments, mainly because they're usually uh, either hateful comments or I just frankly don't have time. But I do check my emails every day, twice a day, so feel free to email me there, everybody. Uh, that works. You can also reach out to me on my social Instagram, on my Facebook as Coach Castle, Castle Thompson. You find me there. You find me on my website, uh, castleinprogress.com. All these things, they're all linked you know, in the description below here. Just check it out if you're curious. Uh, but on to the questions. I'll be answering whatever questions you guys may have. It doesn't particularly matter what it's about. If it's about uh, building a home gym, if it's about biomechanics, best exercise, best cardio, why that's the case, biochemistry, endocrinology, if it's about um, really uh, whatever, guys, you do supplements or whatever, just let me know. Uh, if I can't help you, I will point you in the right direction at least. But nine times out of ten, I should be able to answer your question uh, pretty simply. So um, in the meantime, while I wait for some questions to come in, uh, just some other things to go over. Uh, number one, I'm still not a thousand subscribers yet, so these lives are going to be limited to just like the, the 50 or 100 people who see my videos most frequently. So we got to try to get subscriber count up there. Uh, as always, I have a bunch of new videos and series coming up. Every week I upload anywhere between 5 to 10 videos, depending how you know, long the videos are and how much time and effort I have to put into them. Uh, some of you guys have been asking me the question of how long do these videos take me to make, and uh, it's a good question. Um, the simple videos where I just do a demonstration of a build or I'm just demonstrating an exercise, those videos take less than an hour to do start to finish and upload. Uh, the videos where I demonstrate with the anatomy and I get into the math or it's a lecture, those take me two to three weeks to make sometimes. Uh, just to put it in perspective for you guys, these are not easy to create. Uh, they're not simple to make, at least not for me. Uh, they take me quite a bit of time to make each one of these videos. Anything with with anatomy or math or anything, any of my lectures like that, these take a long time. So that's so why I do ask you guys to like, share, comment, subscribe, all these things, because I really want to get this information to more people. Because most people truly just don't understand how ridiculously easy getting healthy is and how very simple it is to stay healthy, and get muscles, all these things. You don't need a gym, personal trainer, you don't need a plan, you don't need a diet plan, you don't need to spend a bunch of money on food or equipment, nothing. You just, what you have is everything you need. What you have in your house, more than enough. The food you're already eating is good. You can stay with that. You just have to change it a little bit. You got to learn about your sleep. You got to learn about, you know, creating discipline and consistency. But generally, knowledge is power, guys. And if you have the right knowledge, you can be homeless one year and the next year you can be a millionaire, provided you have the right knowledge of how to go about those steps. And being healthy is just the same thing. People, they see bodybuilders, they see People like me who live my lifestyle, they have, you know, we're shredded year round, we are getting bigger and bigger every year. Oh my God, you must spend an hour in the gym, you must spend two hours in the gym every day. You're probably obsessive with your diet, you're probably, you know, all these things. No, I work out five days a week. I'm in the gym, 20 minutes for my workout. I do cardio every day, uh, but that's by choice and it's because I like walking every day. My food, I just eat healthy by my definition. Every meal that I eat, I thoroughly enjoy eating. I'm never sitting there eating something I don't want to eat. Um, and I'm, I'm not special. I'm not unique. I don't have good genetics, as a matter of fact, for this. Um, it is what it is. Everybody, you all can argue as much as you like, but it's very simple. And for most people, your commitment is something like one hour of exercise a week and maybe three hours of cardio a week. For the average person, that is more than enough. Then you just have to learn about correctly sleeping. You have to learn correctly getting the vitamins and minerals that your body needs, either through supplementation or the food you eat. You have to learn how to simply cook and prepare healthy meals and things like that. But again, none of these things are rocket science. Anyone who can't explain these things simply is a moron. 
And anybody who says you need a specific diet or specific anything, or you have to buy this thing, or you need this to get in shape, or you have to have this to get a great ass, or you must do this X, no. They're wrong, they're stupid, they don't know what they're talking about, and you can send them to me. Uh, everything is very easy, very simple to understand, really. Uh, just plug in myself here, but if you guys are readers, you got a 75 book, lots of pictures. It goes over everything I just talked about comprehensively for the average person, even an elite bodybuilder to understand. Uh, it's a very good book I put together, pat myself on the back a little bit, but I did it for you guys. I know all this stuff. It doesn't benefit me to put it in a 75 page format like this. I know it. Um, if you want it, you email me, I send you a free copy. If you want to support me, go to my Etsy store, buy it for a couple bucks. Um, that's it. You certainly don't have to buy anything of mine. Anything you want, any information you want, it's very simple. You email me, I get back to you as soon as I can with the right information. Now when I say this, I do always have to be clear when I say this, I am also a coach and I make my living from coaching. So if you want to hire me as a coach, that's great. I'd love to work with you for a couple of months and get you where you want to be. That is not the same thing as you emailing me every single day and, and taking over advantage of, of me you know, giving you advice and stuff like that. Don't email me all the time. Don't be shooting me text messages all the time if I'm not your coach. I don't mind answering the occasional question or referring you somewhere, but don't abuse it, please, guys. There's a lot of people email me, text me every day. It takes time to get back to all of you. Please make sure your questions you're asking me are something you cannot look up yourself. Uh, but anyways. Let's get into the questions today, guys. And just a reminder for anybody who hasn't heard me already, today's only going to be uh, 30 minutes. So, uh, hi, Magnus. How are you? Good to see you again. Uh, JC Lips, how are you, John? Uh, should we be concerned about fatigue and recruiting maximum fibers each set when lifting high reps? Chris Beersley says there's more fatigue during higher reps and less hypertrophy and less recovery from workout to workout. Okay, so let's see if I explain this simple for you. Long story short, as you guys have heard me say many times, your muscles don't have brains. They know they have a function, and that function is to move a lever. And to keep it very simple biomechanically, just the pure mechanics of it, the objective of that muscle to efficiently target that muscle efficiently with maximum efficiency, the actual loading or the weight used is irrelevant provided it's enough to stimulate your muscle fibers maximally. So, to keep it even simpler, what that means is, if I'm doing a bicep curl, I have to start it in the optimum position. The optimum position for every muscle is starting with what's called a mechanical disadvantage, and then having the active lever pass through a resistance curve, which at the midway point will take it perpendicular with the direction of resistance, and then completing the movement with a mechanical advantage when the muscle is fully contracted. All muscles without fail, this is the optimal resistance curve for each muscle on your body. This is how it works. Now, you can obviously do this with different weights. So I can do a bicep curl with five pounds. I can do a bicep curl with 50 pounds. Now, the, what you're referring to is if I do, for me, my bicep curls are 35 pounds. 35 pounds, will get me over 20 repetitions, 25, 26, 27 repetitions with 35 pound bicep curl. If I do three sets of that, the first set, let's just say it's 30, the second set is 27, and then the third set is uh, 24, okay? But I didn't change the weight every single set with 35 pounds. Would there be a difference in muscle growth or fatigue if I increased the weight to 45 pounds and my first set was 12 reps, my second set was 10 reps, and my final set was, let's say, seven reps. Would there be a difference in fiber recruitment and fatigue? No. And the reason for this is because your muscle's primary fuel source is, well, sorry, only, your muscle's only fuel source, rather, is glucose. And when the glucose is gone, the glucose is gone until your body will then take all those waste products and everything that was just used up by the muscle, put it through the lever, through a process called glucogenesis, We'll then shuttle it back to the muscle, replenishing it with the stored glucose once again. But this takes time, which is why we wait in between sets. The other factor is damaging the muscle fibers. Me doing a bicep curl to 30 repetitions the first set and breaking all the fibers in 30 repetitions and fatiguing and failing the glucose in that muscle at 30 repetitions is the same as me doing it with a 45 pound weight 
and failing at uh, 12 repetitions the first set. Oh, sorry, with like two or three reps in reserve the first set, stopping at that point, etc., etc., etc. It's the same thing. Your muscle doesn't know. It just knows uh, I need this much fuel and I need to use this many muscle fibers. Now, provided the weight that you're doing is above, let's say, 60% of your load capacity, you're good to go. So, to keep that even simpler, uh, let's just say with perfect strict form, your shoulder doesn't move, your elbow doesn't move, your upper arm is parallel to your side, it's like it's locked in place, you're doing a bicep curl with a hammer grip, you go through a correct resistance curve, full range of motion, etc. all of these things, and you do one repetition with 55 pounds. And you could only do one if you tried to do a second, it wouldn't happen. That is your one rep maximum. Now you will of course stimulate a lot of muscle fiber recruitment. However, you're not gonna deplete your glucose. You're just gonna bust some fibers basically, but you won't deplete your glucose with a single rep. So there is a sweet spot. And that sweet spot, like I you know, kind of repetitively say, is you wanna be somewhere between 12 reps and 30 reps per set. If you're in that area, you're pretty sure to be failing with your fibers and your glucose and everything else around the same time, provided it's a rapid concentric and a very slow eccentric, so you're maximally damaging all the muscle fibers. Um, I don't know if you guys have any questions you want me to elaborate on that, but I can if you want. But um, again, it, all in all, if you're performing the biomechanically best exercises, you all, everybody worries about weight entirely too much. And it's, it's very silly to worry about, I'm gonna use a 10 pound dumbbell, I'm gonna use a 15 pound dumbbell. That's extremely silly because whatever weight you're using is not the weight that's being delivered to the target muscle. It's being loaded with a lever magnification anyways. So if I'm curling a 10 pound dumbbell at the, the moment when my lever is parallel with gravity or perpendicular with resistance, my bicep is actually getting 120 pounds of load in that position. It's not getting 10 pounds of load. It's getting, uh, excuse me, 120 pounds of load in that position. So it's irrelevant. The only thing anybody has to worry about is staying with perfect form between 12 and 30 reps and stopping with two to three reps in reserve. The weight you are using is completely irrelevant beyond that point. And if you think it's relevant, um, you're very mistaken. Also, your weights will not change very much. So again, people asking this kind of question is what kind of weight is best, what kind of weight, they're really looking to keep increasing their weight, generally speaking, like, oh, I wanna do more weight next week, I wanna do more weight next week. That's not how it works. It takes a very long time to be increasing your weights once you actually find your correct weight. And the reason for this is if you're doing exercise correctly, you will not be doing compound movements. You will be doing isolated movements. You'll be doing only a bicep curl to only target the bicep. You'll be doing a leg extension to only target the quadricep. You'll be doing a tricep extension to only target the tricep. Each one of these with perfect form, each one maximally targeting the muscle with a full range of motion, which you can't get with a compound exercise, each one taking it through a correct arc of resistance, which again, you can't get with compound exercise, and each one actually being able to take it to failure, which again, you can't do with compound exercises. So provided you're doing the biomechanically correct exercise, you are failing, close to failing, with two to three reps in range, in reserve, between 12 to 30 reps every set, and you're doing no more than three sets, and you're doing that particular muscle group every three to four days, you will make the best possible progress. You fucking with your weight, so I'm gonna do another pound, I'm gonna do another half pound, I'm gonna do uh, next set I'm adding a pound, next set I'm adding half a pound. It's basically irrelevant. Um, this would get into sport specific, but I don't think we're talking sport specific. I think we're talking mainly just muscle building and, and looking good. So outside sport specific, uh, that's the, the long and the short of it. I hope all that helps. Um, let's see, the next question. My opinion on doing full body workouts with just one set for each exercise till failure. Love it, love it actually. I have a lot of clients that actually do that and it's very simple. Uh, I give them basically a schema, it's 20 exercises, and the way I have them perform it is just the most efficient, rapid way to do it. So for like eight of the exercises in a row, all they have to do is shift their torso and they're training a different muscle group without changing the cable angle or anything else. They just shift their body position and then they're training a different muscle group. A full body exercise, uh, just real quick to clarify, just briefly, that would be for example, biceps, triceps, front deltoid, rear deltoid, 
lateral deltoid, mid traps, upper traps, lats, pecs, obliques, abs, erector spinal, your glutes, your quads, your hamstrings, and your calves. That would be full body. You would be performing that particular set, um, like all one exercise for each one of those muscle groups. You'd be performing that every, uh, once a, oh my goodness, excuse me, twice a week, three to four days in between basically. So you'd be exercising twice every week. And there'd be two to three days in between your full body split. And every single one of those exercises would be performed, as I've said, 12 to 30 rep range with the perfect exercise, nearing failure towards the end of that set, and then you just go to the next exercise. So just to keep it simple, for me, I would grab 35 pound, uh, 35 pound dumbbells, I would do my bicep curls, I would do two to three reps in reserve before failure, I'd put those down. I would then immediately grab cables from behind my head, and I would then do my triceps. I would then do a front deltoid press, a rear deltoid pull, a lateral, you get the idea, a lateral raise. I'd go through all my exercises, a single set, each one stopping two to three reps in reserve to failure, and that would be it. At the end of this, you're not really gonna be tired. At the end of this, you're really not gonna be like covered in sweat or anything or even out of breath, but you will have done plenty to stimulate muscle growth provided you did everything I just said. And if you do that every week and it's just two days a week, like I, again, like I said, you're gonna make really good progress, really, really good progress. Uh, are you gonna make the, the best possible progress? No. But is it a really good time-saving, efficient way to do things? Absolutely. And if you wanna take it a step further, you can do this in your house. You, like Again, most of my clients, they don't go to the gym. The gym is not an efficient place to train. The gym doesn't have any good machines, generally speaking. It's a very distracting place. You have to pay money for a membership. There's a lot of assholes there. Everybody wants to talk to you. It's covered in distractions. You can just use a doorway gym like I always recommend. All it is is an adjustable chin-up bar and this. I mean, like This is a whole gym right here. It's a pocket gym. I just put up a video on how to actually make one. I put up another video using it. I got a bunch of videos, but this is a gym. This whole thing is a gym. When I go on vacation, this is what I bring with me. And I train, I train every muscle on my body perfectly from my hotel room. I don't go to the hotel gyms. I, I don't, there's no reason to. I have a lot of clients, I go to their house, I just bring this with me and I train them. You, it's not resistance bands, it's just a nylon cable, it's two swivel top pulleys, six clips, a pipe which also doubles as a handle, two Velcro straps, and um, no, that's it, and that's it. And that's the whole thing. And provided you have that in a bucket of some form to put sand or water or cinder blocks or anything like that in, you're good to go, you got a gym. And you can target every single muscle on your body perfectly. So you don't even have to go to a gym. So that saves you the commute of the gym. And then all of these other things, like most of my workouts I do in my house, they take me anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. I just walk into this room where you see me right here. I do my quick little workout and I'm done for the day. Uh, another easy way to do it is if you want to work out in your house, do a set in the morning, come back three hours later, do another set. Come back another three hours later, do another set. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Your muscles don't know if you're training directly in a row or not. And the more time you actually give in between exercising them, the better. I mean, within reason, kind of within a day, if you will. But anyway, let's get to the next questions here, guys. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh, a lot of questions here. We go. So, uh, what are your thoughts on the new study showing overhead triceps extensions producing superior growth? Uh, I saw him make a post about that, but the issue is, is he doesn't know that much about mechanics. So, with the overhead. Uh, tricep extension is when you do something like this and you're doing this. When you're doing that, you're, you're basically overstretching the muscle. It's something called active insufficiencies occurring. And, oh, sorry, passive. Passive insufficiencies occurring. The muscle's overstretched to begin with, and you're also not going to be putting it through a good resistance curve. So, is it superior to other tricep exercises? Yeah, it is. It's superior to, like, um, I'm not going to do a list. But it is superior to other tricep exercises. And if they were to compare that exercise to other tricep exercises, of course they would find it superior. However, if they would compare that exercise to a perfectly performed tricep extension, which is actually biomechanically correct, they would find that the correct biomechanically correct one wins every fucking time. And that's because the muscle is actually the correct length, able to produce the correct amount of force, or maximum amount of force. Um, so that should, that should cover that. And by the way, I, I literally have his book. I promote his book all the time. 
Uh, he knows everything there is to know about hypertrophy at the moment. All the latest research, he knows about it. That's why I got the book. I follow him, but once again, he doesn't understand the actual biomechanics of movements. He, he understands a different side of the aspect, um, like a different aspect of it. Uh, I do know Doug's in conversation with him, and I am once in a while, and so is Bill Campbell. Uh, I just chatted with him the other day. Um, ba -ba -ba, that was an excellent tech. Thank you. Definitely helps. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, bring up Chris Beardsley so much. Even Doug disagrees with him too, bro. But he says there's another risk. So it's falling information. That's why. Sorry for being so redundant. Like a... Well. Okay, I, no, I understand what you're saying, so um, I'll put it to you like this. Uh, I don't think I've ever met anyone who came across me or Doug or, uh, or, like, or like Lee or somebody who teaches biomechanics. And we all teach biomechanics. We all educate about biomechanics. But when I first came upon Doug, I think it was eight years ago now, uh, I was known for being the best deadlifter. I was known for having ridiculously heavy squats for doing... 50, 60 chin-ups in a row, I could do fucking 150 push-ups in a row, it doesn't mean anything, it means nothing. I would do a hack squat with a thousand pounds, so fucking what? That wasn't my muscle being loaded, that was me compromising a bunch of things. Now when I came across biomechanics, I was fortunate and that I was also reading a lot of stuff about evolutionary theory of human development uh, through Richard Dawkins' books. So the evolutionary theory of how we've got to get like, our skeletons as to where they are now, coincided beautifully with Doug's work. But you're gonna have cognitive dissonance. You're gonna have, uh, well, I won't get into it too much, but humans have things called cognitive biases. And these cognitive biases kind of keep us in fixed and frozen mind states. Now, I tell people all the time, it's really good to have different opinions. It's really good to have different points of view on a particular subject. It's really good to have conflicting, you know, like debates and stuff like that. This is, this is good for science. This, this produces results. Uh, eventually, with enough debates, the truth comes out. Uh, but the thing is, that the biomechanics, the truth is out. Uh, we know it's the best. With hypertrophy, we know almost all of the stimulus for hypertrophy. There's some stuff we don't know still, but we do know the key factors of it. We know how to make muscle grow. We know some people are genetic freaks. We know a lot of people take steroids and don't talk about it. We also know that a lot of these people with these bodies that we, we look to, these, these Chris's and these Doug's and everything else, they have great genetics to begin with, and they all sound very knowledgeable. And it's easy to sound very knowledgeable when you're talking and no one is interrupting you or deb debating your points with you. When you're just allowed to talk freely, uh, you can sound really fucking smart. And that's great, but it, it doesn't mean you're right. So my general advice to people with this is get what you think is the correct information, which at the moment hopefully should be biomechanics and, and hopefully again what I've told you about rep ranges and stuff, although you can refer to Brad as well because he says the same thing as I do, because I got my information from him. Um, but once you have the correct information, it's a matter of just applying it. Uh, you, have, you now have full confidence that what you know is best, well hopefully anyways, and if you don't watch more of my videos or watch more of Doug's videos or buy Doug's book or buy, buy Brad, Brad's book or buy my book or wh whatever, and, and just do more of your own research. But there comes a point where you have to stop looking around at everything and you have to kind of tunnel vision yourself. So I guess my best advice would be stop trying to get so many different conflicting opinions and, and resources from all these different people and stuff. Uh, if you're gonna focus on studies, don't try to read all the studies and stuff yourself. Try to find somewhere that summarizes them for you. That'll save you hundreds of hours and just try to stick with a couple people that you, you really trust, but then make your own opinions. Don't just regurgitate people, decide for yourself if this is accurate, and then stick to it, but just make sure you have a damn good reason for believing this is true. That's why everything I do is evidence-based. So if there is not significant evidence for it, it's not real, basically. I mean, I know other things are theories, like the theory of evolution, but that's just a word to describe it. Theory is still theory. It still means, yeah, this is what happened. Uh, next question I got here is, uh, what am I doing an interview with Doug Brignoli again? Oh, uh, soon. I just, I was just talking to him yesterday, actually. He has, um, I'll, I won't divulge his secrets, but he has a lot of fun stuff in the works coming up. And um, we were actually chatting about one of his products. Um, but hopefully, um, 
I would think within a month or two he'll be on again. I have some really, really interesting questions for him, actually, just for my own personal benefit. I'm very curious about a few things that I think he knows that I don't know. So you'll get to hear some interesting questions from me. And then if you guys have any questions for Doug, I'll leave them in the comments on this thread. And I'll make sure to read them because, again, I read my lives. It's the only one that I read. I don't read comments and other videos. But I'll read these, and I'll make sure that uh, I kind of phrase them a little bit better for Doug. Try to get some answers for you guys. And, uh, oh, not to be rude either, but um, when it comes to the, the, the biomechanical knowledge that Doug has, I don't disagree with anything he says, actually. Um, you, you could just consider me like a little mini, mini me version of Doug. I mean, I'm not regurgitating what he says by any means. I simply know it to be factual. He's been kind enough to very, very kindly give me a lot of his time over the past seven or eight years. He's been a great mentor to me. But um, I can answer most questions. He can, I, I would think, at least about biomechanics. Maybe not about other subjects in particular, but biomechanics, yeah. Uh, but anyways, guys, I have about, um, I got about four minutes left for this, and then I gotta get going. I have a really busy day, so anybody's got some questions, try to, try to get them in real quick today. Because sometimes, I don't know, but there's a lag for some reason, so sorry about the lag. Uh, I'll have another one of these coming up on Sunday, and next next Sunday, obviously. Uh, this week, I have a couple of videos. I'm doing another ego lifting versus biomechanics, uh, where I break you know where I break down certain exercises and why they're really stupid and they don't train muscles that you think that they train. I have another interview coming up this week. I'm having Oz back on to do an interview. I have the uh, Monday Morning Adapt and Overcome podcast with Matt, and Oz will be a guest on this one as well. So it's going to be another uh, three-way call with Oz weighing in as well. I have another neurologist interview uh, this coming week. I'm going to start uh, the audio reading of my book this week. I'll do at least chapter one I'll do this week. A lot of stuff in the works, guys. A ton of stuff in the works. Uh, ba -ba. I found Doug on Rick Drayson's podcast. I think that's where most people found Doug was on the Rick Drayson podcast. Most people don't know, but the reason... This is called Castle's Corner. is a little bit of a tribute to uh, to Rick's corner, actually. So this is my name and then Corner as a tribute to Rick because uh, on Rick's uh, particular podcast is one of the first ones I found, which I truly enjoyed listening to and had some great information on it. And Doug, of course, I found there as well. So yeah, th that's actually why it's called Castle's Corner. I don't think I've ever addressed that before, actually. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Very smart of you, yeah. Would you agree that cardio is best done in zone two, as is recommended by Peter Alita? I don't know what zone two means. I have no idea what it is, and I don't know who this Peter guy is. Uh, it's one of those things that I can't keep up with everybody in the YouTube and the, the, the world. There's just so many exercise people and people who think that they know what they're talking about exercise. I can't keep up with everybody. Um, I Generally speaking, if you're going to say the name of somebody, I probably don't know who they are. So just, if you could rephrase that for me really quick, uh, just in a, a different way, Abel, so I can answer you. Um, maybe just rephrase it a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Uh, side note, I've seen people comment that do the five to eight rep for, say, biceps, and they're like, yeah, I've gotten stronger, but bicep didn't grow. Hopefully it will soon. So what do you say, bro? Uh, believe. Um, well, it could just be genetics. Uh, it could be a short muscle belly, it could be a long muscle belly, it could be that they're not actually training with the correct intensity, it could be they're not eating enough protein, it could be their hormones are optimized. It could be a lot of reasons, honestly. But strength does tend to go up before growth goes. Uh, let's see here. Your book is awesome. I'm reading through it again. And the breathing techniques, I can see a huge difference. Yeah, you, you really need to focus on becoming a horizontal breather for sure. Uh, most people breathe vertically. You really have to breathe horizontally. Make sure when you inhale, you completely relax your abdominals. You breathe very deeply. You should almost look like you're pregnant. And when you exhale, don't passively exhale. When you exhale, you should be trying to bring your belly button to your spine. Every single exhale, hard. This is also going to correct your posture. Most people have an anterior posture tilt because they don't breathe correctly. That's why most people look like they're pregnant and their backs are like this. Uh, it, it's not healthy. So yeah, you're going to want to correct your breathing for sure. Thank you for uh, the compliment of the book, by the way. Uh, look forward to the Doug interview. Yeah, me too. I, I love chatting with Doug. We have much funner conversations off air. We, we have to be cautious, you know, when we're recording. But uh, I just want to say, guys, uh, Doug is a, just a phenomenal human being, really. And uh, I'm, I'm so appreciative for the time he's taken for me and, and just the passion that he has for what he does. He is, he's a big reason that I do what I do as well. So just hats off to Doug as always, and I'll make sure, like, like as always, I'll tell him everybody really appreciates what he does, as do I do. 
because uh, he really needs to know that he's I mean I get hate mail you know a lot of it but I can only imagine the the load of shit that poor Doug gets so <laughs> people are assholes uh, it's crazy how we breathe incorrectly and didn't even know it. Scary. No, it is, it is scary. And you'll notice when you, you walk around in life now, you'll see people. Everyone is breathing incorrectly. Everyone has horrible posture. Everyone has no idea how to eat. Everyone has no idea how to exercise. Everyone has no idea how to walk. Everyone has no idea how to jog. Everyone has no idea how to run. Everyone has no idea how to sleep. I know it, nobody has an idea how to properly plan or schedule a day. I mean, I could keep going down the list. I mean, I, I just had a half hour conversation with, uh, with Bill Campbell the other day because he had never in his life heard of psilocybin. Uh, psilocybin, by the way, is magic mushrooms, in case you guys didn't know what that is. But using psilocybin to treat lots of things uh, and increase neuroplasticity is, is a biggie. And I was shocked that, that Bill didn't know about this because you know, he's knees deep in this kind of science stuff. He'd never heard of it. So even the experts in the fields, you know, they won't hear about stuff. Again, same reason, I don't know who a lot of the people you, uh, you mentioned are. I, I don't know who they are, because I don't keep up. I, I spend most of my life reading books, studying, taking courses, certifications, going to lectures, giving lectures, and helping clients. I mean, I don't, I don't watch other people's YouTubes because I already know how to exercise. I know how that sounds, but I mean, arrogantly, I don't need to watch other people's silly videos about exercise because they don't know what they're doing. I don't have to watch other people's silly videos about cardio because they don't actually understand the science. They're just people who have a camera and a voice. Uh, I don't waste my time. I don't have a TV. I don't follow news. I don't watch politics. I don't care. It's not my business. It's not in my bubble. If it's not in my bubble, I don't care about it. I care about myself, my family, my clients, and helping whoever I can help. That's it. That's a good way to have a simple life, guys. I can't think about everything and everybody. <laughs> All right, there you are. So let me get to this last question. Zone two is performed right below the lactic threshold. Most benefit for the mitochondria, 45 minutes longer falls. Yes, I would, I would agree zone two then, um, provided, well, I suppose the easiest way to put it is provided the cardio is not too intense. It should be, it should be low, steady state cardio. But yeah, 45 minutes or longer, absolutely needed for most benefits to be burning the most fat. Yeah, absolutely. Um, shit, couple questions real quick. I'll get to them fast. Thoughts on Trevor L. Smith's Beyond Failure Training? Okay, I don't know who Trevor Smith is. Beyond failure training is not productive. Uh, maximal efficiency wise, not so much. Maximal efficiency is a more average volume for three to four sets, uh, training the same muscle every three to four days, biomechanically performing the perfect exercise, uh, in a nutshell. Sorry for the short answer, but I gotta try to get off here, guys. Um, ba -ba -ba. When you do failure training, basically the muscle takes too long to recover and you won't get optimal muscle growth because you're hitting it too infrequently. I mean, I hope that helps. Uh, how do you use breath to reduce overthinking? Okay, so simple answer for that is the more you can slow down your exhale, the less your anxiety, the less you're overthinking. If you're having a conversation with somebody, focus exclusively on that person, listen to what they're saying, really listen to what they're saying, and you won't be overthinking. Um, also meditation in the morning, box breathing, there's, there's a lot of different options. Check out my playlist, um, my, my breathing playlist, there's like 30 videos there. Um, ba -ba -ba. Rough formula, yep, yep, sounds about right to me with the, uh, the zone 2, still sounds good. How tall am I? 6'2", uh, uh, in shoes more like 6'4". Uh, Could you advise if maintaining a straight posture, no forward neck is beneficial? Which muscles maintain it? Okay, guys, this will be the last question. Trade News Center, good to see you again. So having a good posture, easiest way to explain it is you're standing feet comfortably apart. Somebody's got your hair and they're pulling your hair up. That would be good posture. Maintaining good posture primarily has to do with something called biotensegrity. Biotensegrity, in a nutshell, is your muscles being the correct length throughout your entire body, maintaining a stable structure. What happens with most people is that they have overshortened muscles in some places and over lengthened muscles in others. This happens from a lifetime of bad habits, and then it also takes a long time to correct this. Good posture takes a long time to correct. It's not something that can be done overnight, and you have to know how to properly maintain posture. Um, check out my Castle's lectures. I have seven or six or seven different lectures with all the animations you need to correct your posture. As for the head and the forward neck, an easy way to explain it is that the head is actually weighted in the front. There's more weight to the front of your head. And in order to counterbalance that, the muscles of your neck, they actually work 
to counterbalance it by not pulling it backwards, but by maintaining a proper length back here. So by maintaining a proper length, your head is properly counterbalanced. And your whole body is actually like that. Every muscle on your body has a correct length it should be when you're just standing or resting or whatever. And most people, their muscles are not these correct lengths, specifically the ones in the spine usually get screwed up, their hamstrings get screwed up, which results to weaknesses and imbalances in the pelvis, which result in the spine. So all of these things have to be addressed literally from the ground up. Um, so check out my videos on posture correction. Uh, if not, we'll, we'll chat more about it next week, guys, but I really got to get off now, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll chat more next week, everybody. Have a great week. Uh, stay tuned. And as always, guys, if you can, just please thumbs up me. Comment, like, share, subscribe. I really try to get these videos out to more people. Anything you guys are able to do helps and supports. Get the YouTube to pick this up, to send it to more people who, for example, don't know how to make a gym for $28, which is the only gym they need. Who, for example, don't understand that there's only one best exercise for every muscle in your body. Who don't understand you don't have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get something done. All you have is all you need. You don't need a coach. You don't need a trainer. You need the right information. And that's where I come in. I take all the complicated shit, I summarize it down, I give it to you in quick, easy, digestible cues, and then you go live your life better. So everybody, get on your grind, stay on your grind this week, make your life better, and if you can, make somebody else's life better too. Do whatever you can and don't wait, because no one is coming to save you. You gotta do it yourself. I'm here to support you, you have my full support in becoming the best version of yourself. But you got to do the work, everybody. So anyways, you all have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday.